What's up, everybody? This is Night Church with Cadet X, a.k.a. Dr. Bulls. And we're just having a little hash church session. As you can see, we've got the altar set up here. Little quartz crystal. Some Mexican geode crystals. Sacred cactus. And an amethyst quartz that my sister got me for my birthday. Shout out to the pirate ship back there. Nice metaphor. And uh, I'm checking in. I'm excited. We're going to do a little bubble hash rosin review here. And uh, checking in up here somewhere in the Hollywood Hills of Portland, Oregon. And can't really see it, but it's beautiful evergreen rainforest in the background there and uh, checking in feeling grateful feeling blessed that uh, I get to be who I am that I am free that I am part of a family who loves me and that I get to do the things I do in life I am an apprentice shaman I am an aspiring cannabis breeder I'm a cultivator I am a cannabis cup judge I am the mentee of a cannabis cup winner shout out to Bradley Danks he's sourced some of the best genetics I've ever seen in my garden and taught me a lot of really really beneficial things and so the purpose of the session tonight is just to do a little bit of stream of consciousness. We uh, set up an altar here for the night church session, and it's um, it's just a time to sit back, relax, enjoy the smell of petrichor as the rain gently falls around me, and to reflect. It's 2.22 in the morning on the 6th of June 2022 and it's a lot of twos we better be careful <laughs> I'm not a I'm not a, a numerologist quite yet but I'm pretty sure pretty sure when you see an abundance of twos it's best to be best to be cautious let's say yeah <laughs> just look up what happened on uh, February 22nd 2022 and you'll know what I mean but anyways I digress so yeah, the purpose of these night church sessions is to, oh man, is to uh, practice church. Unfortunately, there aren't two or more gathered here, but maybe we could call in some spirits, call in the spirit of my father, the spirits of my grandfathers, the spirit of my grandmother, Gloria. Just call them in, and uh, now we have two or more, so we can do what needs to be done. But yeah, the purpose of this session is just to just to explicate a stream of consciousness. Um, we're doing a little bubble hash rosin review. Uh, was on a bit of a tolerance break from the rosin sacrament, uh, but I felt called to pick some up today through a serendipitous chain of events, and uh, yeah. So, it was a busy week, got a lot done, popped a lot of seeds, spent a lot of time with my family, a little bit of time in the garden, but not much. Fortunately, Mother Nature has been, has been uh, gushing with moisture, and uh, so she took care of the garden for most of the week, which allowed me to spend more time with family, and uh, now I'm just kicking up my feet, and letting loose and doing one of my favorite things which is to which is to review cannabis flower and concentrates and these days pretty much the only cannabis concentrate that I am fond of is bubble hash rosin which if you don't know bubble hash rosin is uh, comes in a jar like this looks like that and uh, bubble hash rosin is made from the the uh, crystals, the trichomes, that are manually uh, 
usually with ice water and some sort of washing machine. They're manually separated from the cannabis leaves and then processed, uh, washed through screens, filter screens at different, uh, different opening sizes and then pressed into a rosin like a, uh, like a violin or viola rosin. And, uh, the benefit of that is that it is a solventless processing. There's no butane. There's no, um, I mean, I guess technically water is the solvent, but, uh, it's solventless in the sense that there's no interaction with the, uh, chemical interaction with the concentrate itself, which tends to provide for a pure and unadulterated, um, product. And so I got into concentrates after judging the 2019 High Times Cannabis Cup here in the state of Oregon. And uh, I was blessed to be picked as a judge for that. And um, yeah, the rest is history. I got into concentrates pretty heavily after that, uh, reviewing them, um, doing blogs about them. And... These days, I just kind of do it for the fun of it. So, um, yeah. So, I first got into cannabis um, a little bit late in life. I was working down in Southern Oregon as a executive recruiter and headhunter for an established real estate firm, which was kind of a high-stress job because we were also managing a startup that was a job board for the industry that didn't have one. So we were creating a website and job board as well as recruiting full time. And the husband of the lady that I worked for, she was the head of the business and he was kind of support. He, uh, he was a spry old Vietnam veteran. And I noticed that most days after lunch, he would come back and he was a lot more, <laughs> a lot more talkative, a lot more relaxed and easier to deal with after his lunch break. And I don't know if it was how he smelled or how he behaved, but come to find out that he was indulging in the devil's lettuce, let us say, uh, during his lunch break. And that made his marriage run smoother. That made his business run smoother. Um, didn't come without consequences. He, he did tend to be more forgetful and uh, let certain things slide. But at that point in my life, I was, um, man, I was a stress case. I was taking everything too seriously. I was working too hard. I was a workaholic. I was undiagnosed with, with certain mental maladies, which I won't go into here because it's just, it's boring to me. And I'm not, I'm not saying it to get sympathy, but I, I realized that something had to change. And so I, I experienced a pretty significant loss in my life. I had a friend commit suicide out of the blue, a grade school friend. And uh, this was on the heels of another friend committing suicide a few years before, um, both of which were uh, subsequent and possibly due to alcohol and drug overdoses. And um, I actually went to the doctor and I remember going in and it was at Medford Medical Clinic, if you're familiar, which is a pretty the biggest, probably the biggest medical clinic in, in uh, Southern Oregon and in Medford there. And I went to see a guy by the name of Dr. John Von Valkenberg. And I just knew that my stress level was overwhelming and that I needed something. I needed help. So, um, he came highly recommended. He was a, a, um, an old army doc who transitioned to private practice. And I went in asking him for some anti-anxiety pills. I think specifically I asked him for, for Xanax, which this was, this was probably about 2014. And at that point in my life, I didn't even know what Xanax was, I knew that I had an aunt that suffered from anxiety and that was how she medicated. So I figured, hey, what the heck, let's go in and let's get some Xanax to deal with the 
overwhelming anxiety and sometimes depression um, as well as other symptoms that I was dealing with and what I found out was that even though I experienced the symptoms of anxiety and that I needed uh, some sort of remedy I wasn't able to get help the doctor wasn't willing to write me a prescription uh, I think I even cried in front of him I was just so overwrought with emotion and so underneath the current of this emotional current that was just dragging me under and so I couldn't get the help that I needed from the mainstream medical apparatus. So I remember leaving that doctor's appointment that day, feeling frustrated, feeling pent up rage and aggression and disgust at, at a medical system that I thought was leaving me behind. But I also felt, I also felt strangely freed in the sense that now that the mainstream medical community wasn't going to come to me in my hour of need, that I could go somewhere else. So a week or two after that, I went to uh, I don't, Southern Oregon Alternative Medicine, I believe, and I applied for a medical cannabis card. I'm not going to say medical marijuana because marijuana is a racist word that's used by racist people. That don't even know that they're being racist. And I'm not one to, to harp on the whole racism thing, but when it really comes down to it, uh, words matter and words say a lot about us. So uh, sometimes you'll catch me using that word, but I do recognize it for what it is and who it was used by and who it was popularized by. And I prefer the word cannabis, not just because it sounds more scientific, but because it's more appropriate. Uh, to the subject matter at hand. So anyways, I went to Southern Oregon Alternative Medicine, I applied for a medical card, and I got it. I got approved almost instantly, and I hit kind of a roadblock because growing up, I never smoked anything. I think I might have taken one drag off of a cigar at uh, high school graduation at the high school graduation party and I remember coughing my lungs out and just say oh that's why my grandpa never wanted me to smoke anything so um, I remember thinking well I can't smoke it I guess I could eat it maybe I could look into things like a vaporizer I, I somehow understood that there were vaporizers out there so Long story short, I sent out online to get a Airizer Extreme Q vaporizer. They were making these out of Canada. They cost about about $140 discounted back in the day. So I ordered one of those, which was a poor man's volcano. If you're familiar with the stores in Bickle Volcano, this was a $140 version of a $600 machine because that's all I could afford back then. And I reached out to a high school classmate that I knew knew some people. And soon enough, uh, my buddy Alex had come back to me with some samples of some Romulan and some Blackjack and a few other strains. And so I took my, took my Extreme Q in the closet when the kids weren't around. And uh, the rest, as they say, is history. I, I ground up. A sample of the fine herb that Alex had procured for me and uh, filled up one of the balloons plastic balloons with vapor and man it was it was quite a profound experience I remember my head just just spinning and my mind opening up and all these thoughts flowing through it and just the speed of consciousness um, accelerating and then also um, also you know becoming becoming more open-minded more open to the airwaves I guess to the things that were floating through the ether and also relaxed and also 
also more nonchalant and more at peace. And at that point, I realized that this plant was something that I had been lied to about, that I had been propagandized through programs like Drug Abuse Resistance Education, DARE, which I was, uh, which I sat through at least a year or two of in grade school. And I remember in sixth grade, I was, I was the DARE student of the year, <laughs> whatever that means. I, I mean, what is, what is a DARE student of the year? I guess maybe I wrote an essay about why I would never, never try drugs. Um, still not interested in drugs, but at this point to me, I had recontextualized my understanding of cannabis and no longer considered it to be a drug. I considered it to be a medicine and something that I took quite seriously and something that I had to investigate further. So unfortunately after that, you know, a couple months later, my ex broke up with me and left me for another guy and uh, who she's still with. I wish them well. Um, and I moved back up to Portland. And so I started started picking up at the local dispensaries. I went to, I remember going to Nectar and find some good things. Back then you could get a, a upper mid shelf soil grown organic ounce of medical cannabis for approximately 140 to 150 dollars per ounce i wasn't buying that much because i didn't need that much i you know one or two hits off of the vaporizer was was more than enough to calm me down and relax me and alleviate me of my symptoms and then i remember after that going to treehouse collective and finding some more exotic things and then after that i realized that that uh Finally, I had my own place and that sometimes when I'd go to the dispensary, I'd find things that were worthwhile and things that were things that were beneficial to me. But as time went on, and this is, you know, around 2015 when legalization started, quote unquote, legalization started here in Oregon. Uh, and what I mean by legalization is really regulation, taxation and regulation started here. And so what I noticed is more times than not, I would go to the dispensary and I would be disappointed with the quality of what I picked up. And so I realized that at that point in time, it was appropriate to strike out and get myself a mentor. So I went onto Craigslist and I don't remember how I found him, but uh, one of us posted an ad and the other person responded to it. And before I knew it, I had my own cannabis growing mentor who was going to teach me the basics and eventually the advanced course in soil grown cannabis cultivation. And so my fiance at that point and I were uh, just closing on a house and um, I was working for the federal government as a uh, as a desk jockey <laughs> sitting behind a computer doing financial models and analysis and deal making and bored out of my mind but I persisted <laughs> so that we could afford the house and uh, the rest of they say is history and I have been uh, an active cultivator in the medical community ever since then and uh, have grown by leaps and bounds so I guess I've been in the game going on eight years now, maybe a little longer if you count the, the original medical days back in Southern Oregon. But, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of the short to medium length version of my history with cannabis. And, uh, I remember the first year I grew Obama Kush, Gorilla Glue 4, and I think Mickey Kush and I was just blown away um, I think I was on bottled nutrients at that point using BioBiz at the recommendation of of a friend from business school and ever since then I've been perfecting my recipe and and working on my craft as a diligent craftsman as what I would call consider 
an artisanal type of type of producer and uh, haven't had the chance to enter my products in any cannabis cups yet because most cannabis cups exclude medical growers but I have had a chance to judge the high times cup twice as well as the cultivation classic which is specifically for um, soil grown organics I've judged that two or three times and uh, so that gives me a unique perspective and cannabis is something I'm passionate about it's something that I consider to be an ally in my life and I also have a unique perspective on it because I have integrated it into my spirituality which was tricky at first I was grown in a non-denominational Christian household and growing up I had no no want no desire no need to to partake of cannabis in fact I, I think I looked down on people that did because I didn't um, I just had a different frame of reference and really was pretty was psychologically healthy at that point and so there just wasn't a, a need for me to uh, to be partaking um, and I'm glad I didn't I think that for me ignorance was bliss and I'm thankful for that time of my life of that idyllic ignorance and that uh, that sanctification I guess you might call it but as I've gotten older and more open-minded I have considered cannabis to be part of my apprentice shamanship and something that I use as a sacrament and I mean sacrament in the sense that you know going to a Catholic church um, you take and, and most Christian churches as well you take the the wine and uh, the wine and the bread and so for me I just appended cannabis onto those sacraments and uh, <laughs> hopefully that doesn't anger God too much but that's something that something that's part of my religious tapestry and something that I am proud of um, so that's a little bit more about me and these night church sessions and why I do the things that I do, why I'm active in cannabis breeding and cultivation and judging. And so to that end, we are going to do a little bit of that. So I guess I'll just walk through what we got going on here. A uh, little sip of the mushroom tea there help the throat so since it's a special session and I haven't done one of these videos in almost two years I think <laughs> hopefully the old ones will be released and you can laugh at me but um, we're gonna use what to me is the first piece of custom glass I well, at least one of the first pieces that I ever bought so tonight we're puffing out of a Kevin Murray custom recycler and then we've got 